So hi everyone and uh, welcome to this particular video on uh, differentiating what a time series is as compared to what a stochastic process is. And this is part of our uh, first module uh, on forecasting fundamentals and on time series fundamentals. So let's begin. Um, I want to first emphasize, you know, uh, before we begin into differentiating the two concepts, why time series is generally important as an econometric field. If you recall, okay, we have generally four econometric goals. Of course, you can generalize into more sort of objectives, but in general, the purpose of econometrics is to be able to analyze data, validate or challenge existing economic theory, forecast economic quantities, and control for unobserved phenomena. And undoubtedly, a bulk of um, pillar three, which is on forecasting economic quantities, uh, is related to time series econometrics, primarily because we deal with an abundance of data, which is time series, and we and economic quantities generally are time series variables. So it's a very versatile econom econometric field, one that has many applications. But in reality, what we denote as a time series or understand as a time series is not so simple, let's say. So, of course, if you sort of looked at any data set, right, you would see there are tons of time series that exist in the world. There are many variables, many economic variables, non-economic variables that are time series variables. And they're generally, okay, realized values. When we say realized, it's what we observe. Right or what an agency or some uh, person recorded as the actual thing that happened. Right, so we have typically on the horizontal axis when we plot a time series data set, we have on the horizontal axis the date, the date, and you have on the vertical axis the value, and then we plot it across time. And generally, that's what we perceive as a time series. Right, the key thing here is. In time series econometrics, we care about both the time series itself and something which we call the stochastic process, okay? And in sort of building up our models, we actually uh, consider more often than not the stochastic process first, right? So what is this stochastic process? Well, the stochastic process is the range of values that a forecast variable, say yt or any variable, would potentially take at different points in time. Okay, the key thing here is would potentially take and this range of values. In general, right, it's sort of like a probability distribution. It's not, it's sort of, it is a probability distribution. Okay, so a stochastic process is generally a probability distribution of a particular variable at a point in time and when we say it's a process, we collect all of those probability distributions across time. And that's what we refer to as the process. We'll see this later in the next few slides. Now, how does it differ from what a time series is? What do we really refer to as the time series? Well, a time series is effectively not a probability distribution. It's just a point because it is the realized value that YT takes at different points in time. So that time series exists within the stochastic process, right? If the stochastic process is a probability distribution function, the time series itself is a point in that probability distribution function. And it's the point that was actually realized, right? It's the realized value that YT takes. So how do we sort of illustrate this? So say we have a probability density function for GDP growth in 1980. So of course, GDP is generally a positive number, but can take any. Of course, we can have negative growth for uh, recessions, positive growth for expansions. And if you look at our example here, on the average, right, majority of the mass okay, is centered around 2 to 4%. Okay, so for this country, okay, majority of the, the likelihood that their GDP growth uh, in 1980 would be two to four is probably very high. The likelihood of a recession is very low. Also, the likelihood of a very big, sharp growth above 6% is very low. So majority of the mass okay, of this GDP growth in, this, in a particular point in time is centered at two to 4%. Okay, now... The GDP value could potentially take any value under the PDF, right? So 
whatever realized value that could be in 1980 could be within this PDF. But again, it's most likely two or three, but you can't really rule out the edges, right? Because it's, it's a random thing, right? So suppose now, okay, that the GDP growth in 1980, when it actually happened, was a 3%, okay? That 3%, so if, say, uh, say 1980, okay, and GDP grew by 3%, that point starts basically the time series, because that was the realized value. That was what actually happened in 1980. It is the start of our time series. It's the start of the realized value of the series. Okay, And if you want to understand the stochastic process quite simply, think of it as this. Say we have uh, here four years. Say we have 1980, 1981, 1982, 1983. A stochastic process is generally a collection of different probability distribution functions across time that pertain to a particular process. So in here, say this is GDP, okay, we have a stochastic process here of GDP from 1980 to 1983. We see the different PDFs for each of these years, right? Okay, and for example, in 1980, we have 3% as the realized. In 1981, we have 2%, 1982, we have 4%, 1983, we have 1%. So the time series is going to be 3%, 2%, 4%, 1%, right? So if we plot this, right, uh, if this is 1980, 1981, 82, 1982, 1983, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. In 1980, it was 3%, right? 1981 is 2%, then we have 4%, then we have 1%. So if we plot it, this is our time series. It's the realized value of what went on in that year. The stochastic process is basically the collection of the PDFs across the years. Okay, So that's the difference between a time series and a stochastic process. Right, So the collection of all these realized values is the time series. The collection of the PDFs is the stochastic process. You can even illustrate it further. Right, You can overlay these PDFs into one graph, as I did here in graph A. And because this is a PDF, it has a corresponding cumulative density function, or CDF, which sums up to 1. So that's how we view the, uh, the stochastic process. So that's it for this particular video. In the next video, we'll deal with stationarity. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.